Hey everyone, Wolf Lord Row here, and today we are back with a second part to our previous video on Vulcan's return to Terra. Following his reunion with Rogal Dawn, Primarch of the Imperial Fists, he moves on to meet his father, the Emperor, Master of Mankind. So, as spoiler warning as usual, today we are covering events in the novel Old Earth, so if you have not read this, as always, go check it out first. That's the best way you get, you know, the most enjoyment out of the lore. And, you know, we're helping to support the great authors of the Black Library. But with that said, let's jump straight into it. The long processional that led to the gate stretched on for more than a kilometre. The custodians marched through the Grand Hall in silence, flanked on either side by a legion of banners and war standards commemorating the many regiments of terror and the Imperium. Amongst the sea of colour and veneration stood the proud symbols of mythic beasts of old earth, the griffin and the wyvern, the lion-headed manticore, the imperial eagle, rendered in silver, gold and bronze, hung with gleaming medals or victory pennants. The banners stirred the heart and humbled false pride. Here was a legacy of war and conquest, of unity. At the end of this promenade of old glories stood the Eternity Gate, a soaring edifice over 620 metres high. Its gilded face depicted the Emperor, plunging his spear into the denizens of old night. A blazing sun framed the Master of Mankind's countenance, a galactic tapestry rendered in eye-aching detail in the background two great titans stood watch at either side of the gate. Little side note here, but can you wait to see Sanguinius going all out fury mode in defense of this eternity gate? Oh my god, I cannot wait. Angron, you think you're tough, mate? You got nothing on this Sanguinius going all out. I cannot wait to see this. I really hope it's written as epic as it should be. You know, that's that's really Sanguinius' final moment of glory before his sacrifice against Horus. But anyway, back onto topic. As Vulcan and his escort closed to within 10 metres, the gate began to part, and a thin figure, quite ordinary looking but radiating in power, stepped from the darkness beyond. He wore the robes common to any Terran bureaucrat and leaned heavily on an eagle top staff. His eyes flashed beneath the shrouded hood that shrouded his face in shadows. Vulcan bowed deeply to the sigilite, Lord Malkador. Malkador dismissed the custodians who returned the way they had come to stand sentinel with the Imperial Fists. Your sons will join the war guard and fight with honor, I am certain, uttered the sigilite. And is that all you saw when you looked into my mind, my lord? asked Vulcan. Malkador did not answer, though Vulcan could tell he saw something of the horror the Primarch had witnessed on the other side of the Imperial dungeon. Come, Vulcan, he said instead, and passed back through the gate. Once they were both through, it shut behind them. Past the darkness beyond the gate, Vulcan met the army he had seen retreating back through the gateway to the palace. Few remained from the number he had witnessed and those that did looked battered and beyond weary. Yet their ranks made ready, facing the shimmering portal now sealed that led to the palace beyond. I saw it, he said to Malkador. I saw what they faced. It is hell, said Malkador without breaking step. Hell given form, and it seeks to undo all of this and enslave mankind to its will. And sat before the portal was his father, the Emperor, upon the golden throne of terror. Vulcan felt the urge to bow before his glory. So achingly pure and bright was the refulgence of the figure upon the throne. He reached for the talisman around his neck and experienced a momentary spike of revelation. The Emperor's voice resounded like a pealing drum or clarion horn. A host of triumphal flutes, the beating of a thousand war drums, it was all of it, and none of it, and Vulcan staggered as he heard it. My son, 
Vulcan wept and sank to his knees, head bowed in supplication. Father. Though the words resonated in Vulcan's head, the Emperor's lips did not move. He remained still, hands clenched around the arms of the throne, feet sat firmly, his expression one of dire and abject concentration. Vulcan realised he had held the portal shut. By his will alone were the demons kept at bay. I have returned, father, as you willed it. Then rise, Vulcan, and do what it is I brought you back from death to do. Okay, so two things here. As we know, the Emperor is the only thing keeping the countless hordes of demons pouring forth into terror. You know, it's by his power alone. Secondly, the Emperor brought Vulcan back from his death. No perpetual resurrection this time. This was the Emperor. The Emperor brought Vulcan back. Why? Well, we're about to find out. But more importantly, we know the Emperor has the power to bring back his sons from death. Now, can he still do it after his battle with Horus? You know, who knows? Obviously, he hasn't done it since here with Vulcan, that we know of. But it opens up some interesting avenues for possible storytelling. Dead Primarchs returning to save the Imperium? Ferris Manus? Sanguinius? You know, screw this, it runs his sacrifice malarkey. I want that Sanguinius model leading my Blood Angels, I tell you. But what if the Emperor brought Conrad Kurz back from the death? A purified Night Haunter, a loyalist Night Haunter back fighting for the Imperium. I think that could be worth a future video debate. But anyway, let's carry on the interaction. Vulcan did as bidden, though with difficulty. The mere presence of his enthroned father gnawed at his resolve. An immense weight resisted him and he fought to overcome it. He heard the Sigilite's voice, distant but urgent, as Vulcan gained the first step that led to the throne's days. Through blazing light and the burning intensity of the Emperor's unfettered glory, he thought he saw his father blink. A momentary gesture, near imperceptible, silenced Malkador's protests. Vulcan would never know what passed between them, but he recognised its toll upon the Emperor who grimaced with the immense effort. Every step brought greater pain, both physical and mental, as Vulcan relived every one of his many deaths. A lightning storm of endings flashed before him, each thunderous crack a blow that drew a wince of barely suppressed agony from the Lord of Drakes. What do you think Malkador was saying there? I'm really curious. You know, was he saying there's another way? Who knows? Who knows? He could have been saying anything. He could have just been saying, hey, you know, Vulcan's going to be in pain here. But really curious what they may have been talking about there. And the Emperor silencing him quickly. And this is also why, in my opinion, we don't have to worry about Vulcan losing his senses again. Every step brought greater pain, both physical and mental, as Vulcan relived every one of his many deaths. He's relived every one of those deaths again, and as we see, he comes out unscarred, still in possession of all his faculties, he has passed them and emerged stronger for it. Whatever deaths and struggles he goes through further on, I believe once he has got through that initial pain of you know coming back to life, he will be back to being Vulcan. And still he rose, another step, and then another. Close now, he saw the strain upon his father's face and realised what it had cost to hold the way open for him and his sons. Though they had been unable to take it and had instead come via a different road, one that had led to the earth itself. And at last, with the talisman of seven hammers in his hand and the throne within his reach, did Vulcan see, and the horror of it, what his father had used him to create. The entire purpose for his resurrection came crashing in. He shut his eyes, the light burning, and when he opened them again, he was no longer on terror. He had returned to Nocturne. A man faced him, slighter of frame and wearing a strange garb that put Vulcan in mind of a Greek and Myrmidon of old earth. A long tan cloak 
swept across his right shoulder, pinned at his breast with a circular bronze stud. Around his waist was a thick belt of patouge, and he wore a gold breastplate sculpted to resemble a man's naked musculature. He had no helm, instead preferring a silver circlet. His dark hair flowed like a mane of jet. Torques ringed his arms, and he wore van braces and shin guards in the same style as his breastplate. You are the outlander, said Vulcan, his own attire and armour that of a nocturnian tribesman. This is how we met, my son. Do you remember it? asked the outlander. Vulcan frowned. Why have you done this, father? I have fashioned something abominable. The outlander's gaze flicked at a talisman around his son's neck and then back to Vulcan. Do you recall what I said to you as we sat here and looked out upon these very sands? The great expanse of the Pyre Desert stretched out before them, harsh and unforgiving, but beautiful in its way. Vulcan did not answer. He did not meet his father's eye. Heat haze made the desert tremble, even with the sun setting and the painting the sand of fiery red. I said your destiny was a great one, the outlander went on, and I said that you needed me more than I knew, more than perhaps than I would ever know. Vulcan shook his head, a grimace of denial set upon his face. But this, how can I do this? You are the earth, my son. It's fire and solidility. That is how. And the great flame that it will unleash if the throne fails? If you fail? Vulcan felt a firm hand upon his shoulder and heard the darkening of his father's mood in his words. It will consume the palace and all of terror. The throne world will burn. A sharp turn brought Vulcan eye to eye with the outlander. Incredulity warred with duty on his face. To deny it to my brother? No, my son, said the Emperor sadly, the master of mankind standing before him now. Not to deny it to Horus, but to chaos, and to strike a blow against their forces the like of which they will never recover from. To win the war, you would sacrifice terror? If terror falls and Horus takes it, then we have lost anyway, and all of mankind will suffer. Vulcan looked down at the talisman in his hand and fought the urge to crush it, though he knew it would not yield to even his strength. I am sorry, my son, said the Emperor. I needed to hide it from you, and what you had created and what would be wrought by it in my name. Has this, has it always been within me, the capacity to fashion such a thing? Tell me, my son, why did you destroy your great works and send the others where no one might ever find them? I feared that they would be put to ill use and what they could unleash. Which is why it had to be you. It has ever been within you, Vulcan. And I hoped such a day would not come to pass, that I had no need of it. I hoped for a great many things, he said sadly. Your death your true death and resurrection brought forth what you needed to fashion the talisman. All of your pain, the suffering of your legion, it has led to this point. Vulcan met his father's gaze defiant. And if I refuse? You will not refuse, for you still believe in hope that I will prevail, that Horus will be stopped and the war will end. But you are also pragmatic and know that this must be done in case hope fails us in the end. And as before the light grew around the Emperor, radiating from his skin, and Vulcan shut his eyes lest he was struck blind. Upon opening them, he was once more before the throne, his father's unswerving gaze upon him, willing him, urging him. Vulcan wrenched the talisman from his neck and reached out with it towards the throne, a small circular aperture presented itself, and without further hesitation, he pressed the talisman into it. In the moment of connection, Vulcan saw a flame rise up to engulf the Tower of Hegemon, to swallow the Tower of Heroes and all the mighty spires of the palace. It spread, 
this conflagration within his mind sweeping across the Pan Pacific, Ursh, High Brazil, Ind and Nordrafric to every region until nothing remained but ash. The talisman would magnify the power of the throne to unleash cataclysm. Vulcan blinked and it was gone. A part of the great mechanism, impossible to remove and forever waiting. Staggering back down the steps, his mortal flesh re-knit itself, his body regaining its vitality until, by the time he reached the bottom, he was without injury. Vulcan retreated from his father and the throne. His eyes went to the portal. It would fail. His father had seen it, and Vulcan knew what lay beyond. He stepped back until he stood in the shadow of the Eternity Gate and held Erdrakul across his body in both hands, an eternal guardian. Let them come. Okay, wow. What a great priest of law right there. The Emperor and one of his Primarchs, I know I'm biased to this kind of thinking, but I think this conversation is an example of the Emperor caring for his sons. Of course, not as a typical father, he created them as weapons for a specific purpose, but I believe he does care for them. No, my son, the Emperor said sadly, the master of mankind standing before him now, not to deny it to Horus, but to chaos, and to strike a blow against their forces the like of which they will never recover from. And then, I am sorry, my son, said the Emperor. I needed to hide it from you, what you had created and what would be wrought by it in my name. And which is why it had to be you. It has ever been within you, Vulcan, and I hoped such a day would not come to pass that I had need of it. I hoped for a great many things, he said sadly. The Emperor is still a man, a unique man, yes, far above what any of us could imagine, but it's clear he cares to me in a way. Let's make no bones about it, he could have quite easily forced Vulcan to give him the talisman, or even just taken it. But he didn't. Maybe he doesn't care for all of them. Maybe some are more sons and some are more tools, but it's clear Vulcan is a son to the Emperor. And, as I said in the last video, he is the most human of the Primarchs. To me at least. And that's what makes him one of the most important Primarchs. I think the Emperor knows that too. You know, he would, he made them. This is the kind of conversation that Gilliman needed when he returned to Terra after his resurrection, I think. This is what he was hoping for. But the 10,000 years of non-stop battling and suffering have most likely stripped the humanity aspect from the Emperor. Or at least, you know, made it hard to find. And ultimately, yeah, it sets up a doomsday program of sorts, should the Golden Throne ever fail and the Emperor dies. With chaos pouring forth into Terra, the throne will explode and take all of Terra with it, and probably a large chunk of the webway too, but causing a blow to which Chaos will never recover. It's kind of ironic that Abaddon and the traitors are fighting to destroy Terra and kill the Emperor, but if they were to ever achieve it, it would defeat them too. But I guess nobody wins in the 40k universe. And what does it mean for the Siege of Terra? It's never been written that Vulcan was there before. Will he leave beforehand? Will he be there as Sanguinius and Dawn and the Emperor are talking before they teleport aboard the Vengeful Spirit? I'd love to read that conversation. A final farewell between a, a knowing Sanguinius and Vulcan. Vulcan possibly saying farewell to Dawn and Sanguinius and his father for what might be the last time. Oh man, the feel was there. Or does Vulcan join them? Who knows what's going to happen? You know, we've already had changes that we've never known about in previously established lore. Could Vulcan possibly be on the vengeful spirit in that final encounter? We don't even know if Vulcan will survive. Could he just resurrect afterwards anyway? We don't know. We don't even know what's going to happen. This is really uncharted territory. But what did you guys think of it all? Please leave your comments down below letting me know what you thought. And as always, if you're a fan of my content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Each and every subscription really helps to, to build this channel and help it grow. If you guys enjoyed this video, consider dropping a like and a comment like I said. And with that said, I'll see you guys again real soon.